All right, good afternoon and welcome back to the March 21st, 2022 Land Use Hearing Officer meeting. I'm Pamela Jo Hatley. I'm the Land Use Hearing Officer today and we'll reconvene the meeting and move on to the next case. Mr. Hisney. Okay, our next case is item H3, variance application 22-0009. The applicant is Annie Mint Simmons requesting a variance to lot development standard. Staff findings will be presented by Colleen Marshall. Good afternoon, Colleen Marshall Development Services. The applicants requesting uh, setback variances to accommodate replacement of a mobile home on property zoned RC6 with a mobile home overlay. The applicants requesting a 13.9 foot reduction to the required front yard setback to allow for a, an 11.1 foot front yard setback from the south property line. Additionally, the applicants are requesting a 9.1 foot reduction to the required rear yard setback to allow for a 15.9 foot rear yard setback from the north property line. While the subject property is a legal non-conforming lot per SCL 22-0364, Staff found no documentation of illegal access to Rock Hill Road. Accordingly, the applicant submitted an easement access review to gain legal access over folios 60218.0000 and 60200.0000 to Rock Hill Road under project ID 6169. The review was not completed at the time the report was filed. Therefore, staff recommends that the requested setback variances, if granted, be subject to a condition requiring approval of legal easement access to the subject property. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. All right, applicant. And, and uh, would you help uh, the applicant pull the microphone down where she can speak into it, please? Okay, thank you so much. Good afternoon. I'm Annie Mint Simmons. And I'm here for the variance. Okay. And just, um, Ms. Simmons, I need for you just to explain to me why you need the variance and what exactly do you need. Okay. I need the uh, variance because Rock Hill Road is here and I'm up in a lane behind the church at 9834. And one of our properties, my dad's property is 9836, and I'm 9838. Okay. And I have obtained the permanent uh, easeway from the church from both properties in front of my property. And um, did <clears throat> the staff said that they were in the process of reviewing the access. So did you provide that information to the county so they could take a look at that easement access? Yes, all the forms have been submitted. Okay. And then uh, the reason that you need this setback, this variance, what is it that you're doing on the property that you need this variance? Well, uh, the manufactured home that I have there, it has been... Uh, what is the word? It's been has to be demolished uh -huh. because of uh, the damage that was done in 2017 from Hurricane Irma. Uh, later, it came up in um, rebuilt Florida. They came in and they condemned the home, so I'm no longer able to live in it. And they have also rebuilt Florida has also paid for a new home for me to put there. Okay. But right now, I'm just presently living with my sister-in-law uh, till I can get back <clears throat> established. Okay. So a new mobile home is being moved to the property, and you need the setback variance for it to be placed on the property. Is that yes. correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to add? No. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right. We're ready to get back at my place. All right. And thank you all so much. Thank you. Then I need for you to step right over here, please, and uh, sign in with this with the clerk right here to my right. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone uh, here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? 
don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, don't hear anyone. Um, staff, is there anything further from Development Services staff? No, ma'am. Okay. And um, Ms. Mint Simmons, um, I have to ask you again, was there anything else you wanted to add? Okay. All right, good. Thank you very much. All right. Nothing further from the applicant. That will close the hearing on 22-0009. Our next case is item H4, variance application 22-0281. The applicant is Marilyn Machado and Lazaro Duran, requesting a variance to the distance separation required for a proposed community residential home type A. Staff findings will be presented by Tanya Chapella. Good afternoon, Tanya Chapella, Development Services. The applicant is requesting a variance to allow a proposed community residential home type A with six or less place residents at 78 16 North Jamaica to be located within 1,000 feet of an existing community residential home, Type A. Um, for the Land Development Code, Section 61128, a community residential home, Type A, shall not be located within a radius of 1,000 feet of another such as existing home with six or fewer residents, as measured from property line to property line. According to state licensing data submitted by the applicant, there is an existing community residential home type A at 3211 West Sitka Street that is 657 feet to the north of the proposed home. The applicant requests a 343 I'm sorry, foot reduction to the required separation from the existing home to allow a separation of 657 feet. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Chapella. All right, applicant. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here to translate because they don't speak uh, English. I just came to help them to with okay. the language. I speak, uh, please state your name and address into the record. Okay. Uh, my name is Nelkis Martinez. The address is 7816 North Jamaica Street, Tampa, Florida, 33614. All right. Um, <clears throat> have, if, would you please have the applicant state their name and address on the record? Okay. Tienen que decir el nombre y la dirección para el record. Un afternoon. My name is Lázaro Durán, my address is 7816 North Jamaica Street, Tampa, Florida, 33614. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Machado, my address is 7816 North Jamaica Street, 33414. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. And will um, you be presenting their testimony, or did they want to speak and then you translate? Either way is fine. Que si quieres, yo puedo traducirle, o tú puedes presentar tu testimonio, y lo, le leo yo la carta, o usted quiere. You have a letter. Okay, I have a letter that they write. I can't uh, read it if you... Okay, you, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, with the greatest respect, my husband and I come today to present our case. First, we would like to say that we come from a totally Spanish family, very hardworking, eager to move forward and help everyone who needs us. My whole family has worked in the health and well-being of the elderly, which in particular is uh, their profession. For me, it is a satisfaction section to fulfill my work since it consisted of a lot of care, motivation, affection for these elderly people who are so vulnerable. Many of them have a low income, so my interest is to give them a compassionate service with the higher level of dignity and integrity. And thus offer our community a great, a great help for those who need it. Just keep in mind that my project will not affect uh, the resident of the area 
On the contrary, it's for the benefit of those people who live nearby, nearby and want to stay there. We would like to point out that the business is not located on the same street. It has entrance and exits totally different from mine, with no affect either of them. With all respect, we would you ask to keep our request in mind since we will operate in the most attentive and professional manner. We assure you that our intentions are good and thus meet all the requirements of my neighborhood. It is our hope that you will allow me to carry out this project. We appreciate you, your time and consideration. That's the letter that they write. Okay, thank you. I have some questions. Okay. Okay. First, um, how many residents will be staying in this community residential home? Just five. So five um, yes. residents. Five residents. Yeah. They, they will the owner live there as well? Tu vas a vivir cerca de. Sí. Yes. She lives near. Nearby. Yes. So the only people living in this home then will be the five residents. Okay. Uh, five residents and the staff. Van a vivir algún staff o tú vas a contratar personas. Tú vas a vivir ahí. Okay, uh, just the five residents with the staff. How many staff? Uh, probably two. Okay. What kind of services will be provided to the residents? ¿Qué servicio van a proveerle a los residentes? All the all they needed, like uh, personal care, um, home care. I can't read right here. Um, they can offer to the residents a nursing home and uh, all the accommodation, um, all the needed that they have, like an assistant living, something like that. What, <clears throat> what type of residents, what type of medical needs do they have? What? ¿Qué tipo de, uh, como qué tipo de cuidado que ellos van a necesitar? ¿Qué okay. tipo de residente? Pero solamente para las personas mayores. Sí, sí. sí. It's just for the elder people. Oh, elder people. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all the questions I have for you right at the moment. I have your, I have the, let them know I have the application and all the responses they provided and I will read those. Okay. Que van a leer todo la, de todo y el. Is there anything further they wish to add? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I need you uh, to sign in with the clerk, please. Thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, don't hear anyone. Um, development services staff, anything further? Uh, yes, I uh, just want to point out that in the narrative that was submitted by the applicant, uh, they stated that the separation to the existing home was approximately 739 feet. However, in our review, uh, and our measurement on GIS, it appears that the measurement is really 657. Uh, I, I believe the discrepancy is maybe they measured from uh, building to building and, and the, the measurement is, is actually measured lot line to lot line. Uh, so just to avoid confusion in your review, if, if we could have uh, the applicant confirm that indeed the separation requirement, uh, the separation they're seeking approval of is approximately 657 feet. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I need the applicant to come forward, please. Well, Thank you. What I've been pointing out to the hearing officer to avoid any confusion down the road when she's doing her review, your narrative stated, or the applicant's narrative, that the separation between the proposed so many existing one was approximately 739 feet. But in our review, it was actually about 657 feet, and that's measured from property line to property line. 
maybe they had measured it from building to building. Yeah. I just want them to confirm on the record that indeed the, the separation to the existing home measured property profit line is what's stated in the report, approximately 657 feet. Okay. Yeah, they're fine. They agree with the yep. change. Okay, they understand that. Then. Yeah. All right, thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, yes. No, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. This closes the hearing then on item 22-0281. Okay, our next case is item H5, variance application 22-0296. The applicant is Ruba Rail, requesting a variance to lot development standards. Excuse me, staff findings will be presented by Tim Lampkin. Hello, Tim Lampkin, Development Services. The applicant is requesting setback variances to accommodate a proposed single-family home on property zoned AR. Per LDC section 6.01.01, .01, the minimum side yard setback is 25 feet. The applicant is proposing a 15 foot reduction to the required side yard to allow a setback of 10 feet from the east property line. And the applicant is proposing a 15 foot reduction to the required side setback to allow a setback of 10 feet from the west property line. The findings include the subject parcels uh, AR zoning requires a minimum of a five acre lot size and 150 foot minimum lot width. The subject property is approximately 2.83 acres and 105 feet in width. And has been this lot has been certified as a legally non-conforming lot for NCL 21-1265. This has been placed in the case record. The applicant has also advised staff that they're, they initially submitted on December 14th a survey showing several detached structures. Those structures have either been removed or will be removed. Additionally, uh, the applicant initially showed concrete areas within the required 30-foot wetland setback along Lake Thonotosasa. However, the applicant has revised their plan and removed that from the wetland setback and submitted a new revised plan on January 27th. Therefore, no wetland variances are requested. That concludes staff's presentation. All right, thank you, Mr. Lampkin. All right, we'll hear from the applicant, please. One moment, Thank you. turn the microphone back on. All right, please go ahead. Adrian Parker, Leaders Land Management, um, Acting Agent for the Representative. My address is 38024 Grays Airport Road, Lady Lake, Florida, 32159. All right, go ahead. Yeah, as uh, which Tim has been wonderful to work with, by the way. Um, he's helped out a lot with this. Um, as stated, we are looking for the side yard setback reduction from the agricultural by 15 feet on the east and the west um, for the placement of a single family residential home. Um, there's only 105 feet of width and as confirmed, it's a existing non-conforming lot. Okay, so the width of the lot is 105 feet and um, it, it appears to be very, very long. It is very long. If I recall, right around 1,400 feet. I could get my phone out and be very specific, but it is very long. All right, and the zoning setbacks on both sides would be 25 feet. Affirmative. Um, so that would leave you about 55 feet. Yes, ma'am. For the width of a house, if you conform to the setback. Is, is it impossible to do that? Uh, no, ma'am, it would not be. They were already in the process of building design and have submitted to the building department. Um, when this issue arose, um, I 
do believe uh, during the due diligence, maybe the process of finding out it was AR, not a lower um, or I'll say lower density, but a, a different classification of residential that would be more conducive to a lot of this size and standard. Um, when it was brought to their attention, uh, that's when uh, we started looking into the variance process to be able to, because of course there's already expensive architectural design, permitting, and a lot of other intensive and expensive factors that went into this. Okay, so just looking at the um, what was submitted into the record as far as the foot, footprint of the house, are you familiar with that? Uh, yes, ma'am. The proposed house, I yes. should say. So, so it appears that um, you have the main structure of the house, and then you have two garage structures um, on the front of the house. And are those the the structures that really need the setback variance? Um, I believe uh, the internal site plan, actually the garage structures behind them are actually internal structures um, to the home, um, i.e. Um, a den, a living room, things of that nature. The internal floor plan was not submitted as part of this application. I apologize, that could have been some subsequent uh, helpful information. Okay, no, I think I, as you described it, I can see that now because... Um it's clear not all of that is garage. So, okay, understand that. Um, so just one moment, let me just take a look at what's in the record for a moment. See if I have any further questions. Yes, ma'am. So it, it appears the, um, I guess, the primary hardship then is related to the width of the property. Is that correct? That is affirmative. And again, I guess just um, if you would address um, the hardship criteria as it relates to, you know, the design of the home as it is and uh, the hardship with redesigning to a way that it would fit on the lot without the, um, the variance. The main hardship is that the design and completion of it um, was already done before uh, this portion was shown up or excuse me, was addressed through building department and brought to uh, my client's attention. The, the primary is this, this was designed around a exceedingly large family um, that bought this with a wish to have a, you know, very offset yard from the road, a lake and everything to be able to raise their children and have a nice country style enjoyment to, you know, get outside of the city realm of Tampa, St. Pete, which I love the area, but I also live in the country, so I can understand that. Um, that is the reason the home was designed in such a manner, is it's an exceedingly large family. So a, an extremely linear north-south style home kind of would not be conducive or would not be conducive to a large family. Um, why is that? I would believe because with a 55 foot width, by the time you take 22, roughly, shall we say, feet for your standard um, two car garage, that definitely eliminates your opening corridor. And then as you enter the home, you're still reduced to that 55 feet. So you would have a very linear floor plan to where, you know, bedrooms are going to be stuck on both sides and you'll have a kitchen here. Um, and the type of family that they are, it's more conducive to a, a common area for family and um, visiting family of the ethnicity and such to, to have these large common areas to where families can be joined and not this 
just tubular, hate to use the example, an old 1990, 72 foot wide, single wide, almost. Um, of course, this would be extremely large, single wide. Um, okay. So yes. I understand. All right. Um, that's all the questions I have for you. Anything further that you have right now? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank Please you. Uh, see the clerk to sign in. Thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, we have online and we have someone uh, here in the room. So we'll take the person in the room first, please. All right, how many people do we have online? I believe we have um, Les Thompson. Correct. And uh, I just want to check our Janet Lorton or George Lorton. Oh, excellent. Then I believe it's just uh, Les Thompson. All right, so we have two people to speak in opposition, and that's all? I believe we have uh, two people online. We have one per one person online, Les Thompson, that signed up, and then there's Jana Lorton and George Lorton. Okay, all right. So we may have um, one person online, but maybe a husband and wife both wish to speak or something. Okay, so let's say we have three people total, and there's 15 minutes distributed among you, the three of you. Okay. And um, I need you to turn that microphone on there, please, and speak into that mic, and you can use the overhead from there, okay? Can you let me know at 10 minutes, or should I set my alarm for 10 minutes to give them adequate time to talk? You might want to click your alarm. I'll try to, but I'm not sure I'll be able to. Okay. And be sure and state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Janet Doherty Lorton. Um, I am here today. I've taken a vacation day. I'm not here in an official capacity, but I have submitted my resume prior to working for the agency, which uh, talks about my extensive environmental uh, working, as well as I ha I'm an FDEP stormwater inspector and my license number is in there as well so for expert testimony uh, i'm not and obviously at the agency I, I have a great deal of knowledge about development and flooding and natural resources so with that i have a big packet here i'm going to put some stuff on the elmo here uh, but we have a letter of opposition. My husband was here earlier, George. Um, unfortunately, he had to leave for a meeting. Uh, my resume is in here. I have information for Mr. Kaladi. Um, Mr. Kaladi is a developer, and he is married to Ms. Rial. They own the property together. Okay? Uh, the Kaladi... The, the, the building plans are referred to as the Kaladi residence. Spell that, spell that please. K-A-L-O-T-I. Um, and it, all the emails for Ruba Rial are actually have Gus Kaladi's email address. I have his businesses in here. He develops all over the state, worldwide, and the, it's uh, his SunBiz group is called Leaders in Management, and uh, and it's a development company. Uh, this individual and them list the same address in Corey Isles as a resident. They're, they're okay. urban planner. And what is this rel relevant to, please? Well, it's relevant because they're saying they didn't know. Okay, so Mr. Kaladi has developed. He's a lawyer. He's a developer. They bought a non-conforming lot and created a self-imposed impact. It'd be just like buying a wetland. When you buy a wetland, there was a beautiful home on there, which I'll show you pictures, that they took out. And in their variance requests, and I have that in here as well, um, they have extensive violations. And so they didn't provide any of that. I did public records request to the county through the county attorney. So when you check that box, um, but the designation out there is AR, five acres with 150 foot setbacks and 25 foot setbacks. Um, Mr. Lorton and I, my husband, we live next to the residing property. So let me show you some photos. While you're getting those, um, Ms. Lorton, would you um, 
Do you know of any open code enforcement violations? When you say code enforcement, it's not code enforcement. I mean, they've had agent EPC, they've had development services, all of those things. And they checked the box, yes, but they didn't uh, put any of those things in here. They haven't been resolved, all of them, as I'm aware of. But I'm, I'm giving you the information for you to review. So for the Elmo, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? I, I don't know where I'm looking. It, it'll come up, but please be sure that you bring the microphone okay, down. So definitely. We'll capture okay, device. so the Kaladis are asking for a 6,700-foot home. Uh, our neighbors have that type of home next to us on eight acres with 241 square feet. Um, this is the Kaladi residence. I don't know if you can see that. So it lets you know. And yes, you're right. If you actually see the... The schematic that you have, the garages are what's within the setback. I'll provide, be providing you testimony from the status of non-conforming uh, uh, use of law in Florida. And the reality is... All right, wait, just so you can speak into the microphone. We have to capture your testimony. And the reality is money and cost is not a hardship. Okay, they demolished a home that they had that from our property boundary was 24.3 feet. These are the violations right here. It's a big packet. Uh, basically, I'll run through it with you very quickly. They put a dock up illegally. They were cited by EPC. They were supposed to cease and desist. They threw all the wood in the water. They did not cease and desist. EPC came back again um, and made them pick up the wood. Then they had to get an after-the-fact permit. Then they removed all the vegetation in front of the, the home. Uh, no permit. Have to come back for an after-the-fact permit. Planted a few plants. They're all gone. Then they came in and took half of the trees. Uh, there were natural resource. Has a $33,000 worth of penalty. They did it twice. Six months later, they came back and took the second set of trees, which were all the grandfather oaks. Ms. Lorton, from what agency were they penalized? Natural resources. Development certain natural Hillsborough resources. County. Hillsborough County. Thank Correct. $33,000. After that, they came in and illegally filled. They had one cease and desist order. They do most of this work on the weekend. That was on a memorial weekend. My husband wanted to talk about this part where, you know, they cut every tree on the property but left one tree. They illegally filled and created uh, above grade, which would be next to our house. And so uh, he was upset, too, because when they did it, it shook our house. And there was already a cease and desist order. So the county had to come out with a second cease and desist order. And I have that notice of violation. And in that notice of violation, it talks about flooding neighbors with the illegal fill and the above grade. And it even shows the original survey, which they submitted, was 47.33, I think, uh, and you can look at it, it's on, on the document, uh, feet, and now they're going up a foot higher. That doesn't even count the illegal fill. We have a wall right there, and they want a 10-foot setback, but not e even within the 10-foot setback, as a stormwater inspector myself, they put a swale. So they're asking for an impact in the setback. The home before never needed any type of um, attenuation like that because it sat next to us and we were all at grade. Um, so let me get the pictures out that will show you what this is going to look like. While you're getting those, think uh, I have a question and that is um, the home that was there, the existing home that was demolished, and I think you're about to lose some documents through there. Um, the home that was demolished, did it encroach into the 25-foot setback on the sides or was it compliant? It was non-conforming use. Um, the reality was it was 24.3 feet from our wall and I think 20 feet from the other wall. So it was a non-conforming use. So this is the map. Um, this is our home. This is the lot they they purchased, and these are their two exhibits. This home has 2,400 square feet, and you can see this tiny little house here. I mean, that, that's 2,400, and they emanated theirs this way. Um, this other house is 3,000 square feet, so they're much smaller footprint. All of these houses 
are on large lots around the lake with the exception of these non-conforming uses. And this lot and this lot were split years ago. So what I did was I cut out a house on the eight acres, this home right here. This is the Thompson's house, they'll be speaking. They have eight acres and 281 feet. And I impose that on this document. And as you can see, that would be the size of the house. It's gigantic, residing directly next to our home, which is right here. 6,700 square feet, the same size house as this. And to my knowledge, I, I thought the Kaladis only had two children. I don't know about a large family, and I don't know how that creates a hardship when you have 2.83 acres and you could have a detached garage or emanate your house in a different way. These are the people who are within 500 feet that will be speaking out against this. This is, Deb and Don Balaban have already been on record. They submitted their opposition to this. They own this 21 acres along with this 113 acres. George and I reside at about 5.4 acres right here and Les and Michelle Thompson at, at eight acres for a total of 143 acres within this 500 feet that are in opposition of this variance. The other thing that concerned me on the variance was AR is one per five with these setbacks. What they're requesting is RSC two. And on the variance, they said they wouldn't put three homes. But I, that I do not know if two homes will be put on this property. I'm sorry, I don't follow that statement. On the variance, it says, will you have a third dwelling? They said no. But what they're requesting and what they may come back for is they are getting outside of the AR zoning when they have a smaller setback, which equals RSC2. Okay. Thank you. Oh, this is, um, this is their fine. I don't know if you can see it. They've paid the 11700 That's all. All of this is in the record. Oh, that's 10 minutes, so I'm going to jump off real quick so that they can get on. Let me anyway, I have a four-page letter here, Ms. Hatley, along with all of my... I know you're very diligent in reviewing all the documents. A lot of this meat is in there. I've gone through their code violations. Um, but uh, let me see if there's anything else. This and uh, let me just make sure... Um your primary objection then, or objections, are re related to the orientation of the home with its size uh, would be out of character. Is that correct? Is that yeah, fine? character for the size lot. They bought a postage size lot and want to build this ginormous house. Okay. And uh, the other objection is potential flooding issues. Yes, and I have a certified letter from an engineer as, as well as my testimony as well. And um, regarding the size of the home on the size of the property, would you still object if they oriented the home in the other direction so that there were no variants? There was no variance needed, but this, the home is still that large or that size. I think on this lot, that's the size of the house is too large, but everybody has property rights. And everybody who opposed this does believe in property rights. The reality of putting, I, I think the house is too large for the footprint. But the reality is if they have the right to build it, they have the right to build it. What I think is not fair is our wall will be flooded, our property will be flooded, but more importantly, that house will be where Mr. Hisney is from our kitchen window. Okay. Uh, straight up. Okay, I understand. <laughs> so, thank you. With that, I'm going to uh, submit all my testimony here. I'll sign into the clerk and I'll let the Thompsons speak. All right. All right, so we'll go to the online um, persons waiting to speak. I believe we have Les Thompson. Yes, this is Les Thompson. Thank you, Les. Can you please enable your camera? Um, am I? Yes, we can see you now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I won't take up as much time as Janet, in case she wants to have a little bit to say at the end. Mine's more from a practical side. It, uh, we moved to the country to have setbacks. We like our neighbors, but we like our privacy. 
There's a subdivision directly across on this same lake where they allow those kind of homes to go in with smaller setbacks. I'm not sure what the infatuation was with these two acres. He's taken a beautiful, majestic piece of property and turned it into a, ready to be planted for a strawberry field. He's cut everything down on it. It's, 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 it's literally hurt our values. It's, his, it's an eyesore, no matter what size house he puts on it. Uh, there's no hardship. I mean, if he's a lawyer by trade and a developer by ho hobby, he should have done all of this beforehand before he touched the first piece of blade of grass on that property is go for his variances, not come in afterwards and beg for forgiveness. Uh, yeah, that's just not the way it works. He's, he's a bad neighbor to us thus far, and he also doesn't listen to Hillsborough County and their building codes. He doesn't listen to anything. Uh, that's not exactly who you want to have living beside you. The flooding is a big problem. If it comes across George's yard, it's going to come into my yard. There's just no need for some of the things he's trying to do. Like I say, when there's a perfectly good subdivision on the same lake and he can buy a couple acres and build as big a home as he wants to. That property values come down, not went up since he's destroyed it. Um, I mean, I just, I, I just don't know how to say to someone that you're a lawyer and a developer and you didn't go do your variance homework first. And then you come in and beg for forgiveness afterwards. And Janet's right. Most of the work he did, he was doing on weekends. And we were just sitting there shaking our heads, watching him cut down these big, majestic oak trees with no permits. Uh, you know, I wish there was something more the law could do to him, but I guess they can't. But uh, the property values are not going up with him coming out there. They won't go with that big house on there, and flooding won't help our values at all. So I totally disagree with the 25 foot. I totally disagree with the elevations. And I think he needs to plant a lot of trees back on that property. So other than that, I mean, I think that Janet's covered all the legalities of it. And if she's got anything else left to say, I'll be glad to turn it back over to her. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Is um, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Thompson, would you please state your address? For yes, ma'am. It's the one on there. It's uh, 11363 Knights Griffith. It's the one with the eight acres. Did you get that, clerk? Thank you. Thank you. Um, did you have someone else there with you who is who wishes to speak? No, that'll be fine, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The opposition has um, just a little over two minutes. Did you want to speak further, uh, Ms. Lorton? All right, make sure the microphone's on. Can I grab my comments real quick? I just put them in. Yes, Clerk, hold yes just a moment. All right, we'll stand by. I'm just going to cut to the chase at the end, but one thing I did want to mention is their representative and their professional that they have here, uh, Mr. Parker, said it, it wasn't a hardship. He stated it right in the record. I wrote it down. Um, but basically, you know, George and I, uh, it will, as Les said, it will diminish our value of all the properties and surrounding properties. You know, there's bigger lots. Uh, Don Wall is 36 acres to the north. All these lots are bigger. Alex Sink's lot, they're all big lakes on the lot. Um, uh, without adequate setback, their home will be constructed directly next to our home. We are AR zoning. And so, he, you know, you bought the property with AR zoning, five acres with the setbacks. Anybody can look that up, not only a lawyer and a developer that builds all over Florida and the world. Um, they had a beautiful home, and you're going to see pictures of that beautiful home that almost met the setback at 24.3, um, and uh, they demolished it, creating their own self-imposed hardship. Uh, they don't need the, invari the variance. They can build an adequate house with an adequate footprint using the square footage on the remaining property. Or they can reconfigure, redesign, have a detached garage. And the owners have failed to satisfy any of the variance criteria under the LDC. Please deny the request for this variance. All right, thank you. All right, is there anyone else um, online or here in the room who wishes to speak in opposition? Uh, sir, you just came in. You want to come forward, please? Ms. Lorton? Um, before you speak, sir, Ms. Lorton, were you here this morning to be sworn in? You were both sworn in this morning, both of you. All right, thank you. All right. I was sworn in, too. Okay, please state your name and your address for the record first. My name is George Lorton, L-O-R-T-O-N. I live at 11353 Nice Griffin Road and have lived there since 2005. 
my re reason for moving to um, <clears throat> that area was because of the rural nature of the um, property and in, in its entirety around the lake, actually. Uh, and I just feel that we have a situation here where I'm going to be looking at a concrete wall from me to you when I stand on my property line and it's going to be 60 feet tall and I don't know how tall, but 45 feet tall. <laughs> and uh, I just feel like what they are presenting is a self-imposed infliction. They could have designed the uh, property to where it was absorbed the volume of the house lengthways north and south versus east and west and uh, the fact that they're going to put a drainage ditch between in that 10-foot area down to the lake has the uh, lake has always had improper flow uh, down to the lake because of the uh, <clears throat> cause of the angle of repose down to the lake is quite sharp and uh, it drags all of the property levels down to the lake. So uh, what they're proposing is raising it another four feet. I don't know for sure that's right. Um, but, um, uh, and they have put, <clears throat> I, I, we didn't sit out there and count how many loads, but I would say a hundred loads of fill in there, <clears throat> and that, and each time they were uh, under a cease and desist order to not do that, and they continued the debacle of the the other debacles that we've had there is them bringing in vibratory hammers on a Saturday and Sunday vibrating my walls down such that I even think that my kitchen uh, has uh, caused subsidence in that because of that uh, un just maximum uh, uh, vibration. And um, I just feel like it's wrong to change the ruling in that particular area. Well, around the lake, I think, because the lake, part of the lake's overall ambiance is the openness and the ability to see the lake from most any piece of property. Thank you. All right, Mr. Lorton, thank you. Okay. And be sure and sign in with the clerk. And Ms. Lorton, those documents, did you uh, submit them back to the clerk? Thank you. All right. All right, is there anyone else to speak in opposition to this item? No, no one else. Uh, at, let's see, development services, anything further from um, development services? I just want to let you know that we have Carrie Moore of Natural Resources staff on hand for any questions you may have with that regard. Uh, otherwise, we're just available for questions. Um, well, Perhaps natural resources staff would want to address some of the issues raised by the opposition uh, related to flooding um, or fill or um, tree removal. Those issues were raised. Sure, Carrie Moore, Development Services, Manager of Natural Resources. There were several uh, cases and several cease and desist that were issued for both tree removal and fill. The 11700 has been paid, as was stated, and there is still remaining uh, trees that require replacement, which will be resolved within the um, LAL permit for the house, as well as the uh, site plans will be reviewed by uh, county stormwater to ensure that drainage is um, properly addressed and that the disposed fill will not cause adverse impacts on the neighbors. Is the fill required to be removed, um, uh, Ms. Moore, or is it just an after-the-fact permit? So the fill will, um, is not required to be removed. Um, what they are required to do is provide a signed and sealed engineered site plan that addresses the fill. So it may need to be modified, moved around. Um, 
swales put in whatever would be required in order to ensure proper uh, stormwater drainage that would be required um, if the fill was you know let's say uh, too significant for what would allow for proper drainage then they would need to either move it to a different part of the site or remove the fill so essentially they are required to ensure that that the site is not going to cause adverse impacts on the neighbors and the tree removal is uh, that required to be replaced or um yeah, so, so they are doing a combination of payment and replacement. So within the building um, and LAL permits, there is a landscape plan where they will be planting a, sig a significant amount of trees back on site, as well as they've already paid the 11700 to the restoration fund. Okay, thank you very much. That's all the questions I have for you, thank you. All right, applicant, you have time for a rebuttal and summation, and I would like for you to address, please, to the extent of your ability, um, some of the comments that were made um, regarding your client, whether um, your client is an attorney, is a developer. Uh, could you address that as well, please? Adrian Parker, yes, ma'am, I will. Um, he was originally an attorney by trade. Um, he is now currently a commercial developer, and in that, it's, it's generally commercially also does residential site development, but that's on the development grand scheme. He doesn't get into the nuts and bolts of actual vertical construction, can okay. be land construction. Do you have any um, rebuttal or testimony related to other issues that were raised as far as... Um, potential flooding, um, the character of the proposed home compared to other character, uh, the character of other homes around the lake um, or further on the hardship? On the flooding slash stormwater, um, I was glad that um, county staff also alluded to that. That would be in the design of the home. It's actually designed for a swale to carry the most amount of stormwater actually back towards the front of the home and retain that in a uh, basically kind of a pond fountain fashion from what I have seen on the plans. Um, so every characteristic is being taken to make sure there's no flooding offsite. Um, that's also part of the characteristic of the home. I have not personally been to the area, so I apologize. I cannot speak to the characteristic of other homes in the area. Um, but in general, a citizen building a home is going to build the home that they want. And if the characteristic would be detrimental, i.e. in a negative impact, as in a small, a, Put a mobile home in the middle of a really nice subdivision type thing you would get the same argument uh this is one of the first times i've seen someone argue that it would be detrimental to property value um to put a large home in an area on a lake um, usually i would get the argument that that could possibly be gentrification and people wouldn't want it there and their property taxes going up um so that one that's about as well as I could speak to that one. Um, okay, anything else you want to add? Um, no, ma'am, not at the moment, unless you have anything particular. Um, I have no more questions for you then. Thank you. Have Thank you, sir. All right, this closes the hearing then on uh, application 22-0296. Okay, our next case is item H6. Variance application 22-0460. The applicant is Elizabeth Graham. The request is for a variance defense requirement. Staff findings will be presented by Sam Ball. Um, good afternoon. Uh, Sam Ball, Development Services. The applicant is requesting a height variance to install a new six-foot fence on a residential RSC4 zone property. According to Section 672C1A, fences over four feet in height shall not be allowed within required front yards and residential districts, except under specific conditions that do not apply to this case. The applicant 
request a two foot increase to the maximum permitted height in order to allow a six foot high fence within the required front yard on the south side of the property along Puritan Road. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Applicant? Hi, my name is Elizabeth Graham. Um, the property is 5302 Puritan Road, Tampa, Florida, 33617. I live at 5002 Puritan Road, 33617. Um, I um, bought this property a few years ago. It was um, vacant for many, many years. There was lots of um, code violations, uh, a barn, a couple houses. It's almost six acres, I think. And I cleaned this property up. I planted a lot of trees on this property. Um, and what I'm asking for um, is to have a six foot fence in, onto the property in the front. I cannot put a six foot fence at the uh, required 25 foot setback because there are two oak trees that are in that way. Um, so I'm asking to put it in front of them. Um, um, it's impossible to put it there. It, it's totally impossible. The, I have uh, pictures of the tree. My neighbor to the, uh, my direct neighbor to the east side of me has a six foot fence up to the property line. I'm asking it for just to be 12 feet. Um, I have been broken. Uh, people come onto my property um, illegally. I already have a little fence on there. They disregard it. They they think it's the neighborhood park. They walk their dogs on my property. They use my boat ramp on my property. They have cut my uh, 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 fence down. They have taken off the chains off my gate. Uh, uh, um, I, I need to have security on, on my property. It is not only uh, uh, for uh, damage, destruction, and thievery, but also for liability and security. I'm getting ready to build a home on this property. And when you build your home on the property, Ms. Graham, is it your intent to have a 12, or I'm sorry, a six foot fence in the front yard um, for good, or is this just temporary? No, for good. Okay. And um, just like my other neighbor next to me. Okay. All right, and you said the neighbor to the, which direction, east or west? The east. And you have photos? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. The overhead is there, and you may have to turn this microphone off and turn that one on, but we, we, could, we need you to speak into the microphone so we can record your testimony. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um... This is the fence. This is the fence. This is the tree that's, um, um, the, the, the 25 feet is right above it, right at this point here. So um, it, it, it's impossible. Uh, um, this is from the side of the property. The, the fence, the, this is a wooden fence. They just have some shrubbery. The whole wooden fence is still there. Um, it's on the sidewalk. I'm asking to be... And, uh, I'm sorry, that photograph that you just pointed at, you said the wooden fence is there, it's on the sidewalk. Is yes, that the right neighboring pro property to the east? Yes. Okay, and that is that neighbor's side yard, correct? Um, possibly, yes. Okay, so that's different because that's their side yard, not their front yard. Okay, well, I was just told to take a picture of that, so I did. Okay. And okay, I'm sorry, please proceed. That's fine. Um, I would have to have a variance anyway in order to have the six foot fence. I think it's necessary to have a six foot fence. Okay. I, uh, um, the fence. Uh, 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 I have fruit trees. I, I have uh, I, I'm, my neighbor uh, to the west of me. Um, 
I don't know if you're familiar with that property to the west of me. There's a lot of um, illegal things happening there. I want my property to be secured. There's lots of code violations. The the uh, After buying this property, I didn't even realize the, the drug usage next door to me. Um, the house was burned down. Uh, um, there's speculation th that there might have been a meth lab in there and it blew up one night. Um, we have, we, the community has, tr is trying to do something about that, but we're having our difficult time, uh, um, because a p person that is there doesn't want to leave. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, the, uh, I requesting, uh, for, a, a 13 feet to be forgiven so that I can not have people come onto my property. I mean, they're coming over a four-foot fence now. What would make you think if I did it, 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 it that they wouldn't still continuously come onto my property? All right, and you could put a six-foot fence at some point without a variance, right? Is this, what's the setback in this area? 25 feet, but I can't because there's trees in the way. Okay. I have neighbors that support me. All my neighbors support me. Um, I've submitted letters that of their support. My neighborhood association supported it. I'm going to do a beautiful fence in the front yard. It's um, 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 I've really done wonderful things to this community. Um, I want to um, put a nice aluminum one so it's uh, people can still enjoy the view of the property. Um, I only want to add to the community, but I also want my safety and security as well. I don't want to be, I, I call the police. They've, they've dug up my landscaping. They pick my fruit. They go on, they walk their dogs. They take, they uh, take down my chains. They use my boat ramp. You know, they, they just have no regards that, that that's my property. Okay, understand. Um, all right, and is there a way to jog around the tree with your fence? Can you jog around? Can you jog around the tree with your fence and so that it's uh, it meets the setback? No. And why is that? How do you jog around a tree? So that the fence... Goes around the tree or behind the there tree. Are multiple trees. Okay. I had more more trees in the front as well. Okay. I mean, I even planted fruit trees in the front yard. They were all stolen. Okay. So you're asking for a variance for a six foot fence at 12 feet from the property boundary. Is that correct? Yes, please. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add? That I would appreciate the approval. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Um, if you have wanted to submit those documents into the record, please leave them with the clerk and need you to sign in with the clerk, clerk's office. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Do not hear anyone. Is there here uh, anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, do not hear anyone. All right, development services staff, is anything further? No, ma'am. All right. Um, applicant, you, you actually have an opportunity for any further comment. Do you have any further comments you wish to make? None, okay, all right, thank you very much. So this closes the hearing on application 22-0460. Our next case is item H7, variance application 22-0475. The applicant is Daniel Jones of DR Jones Holdings. They're requesting variances from the Citrus Park Village Development Standards uh, found in uh, LDC Part 3.10. Staff findings will be presented by Israel Monsanto. Good afternoon, Israel Monsanto Development Services. This is variance 220475. The applicant is requesting variances from the requirements found in the Land Development Code Section 31000 Citrus Park Village Development Regulations. The parcel is located at 14508 Bergford Avenue in Tampa and is 1.2 acres in size. The site is within the Citrus Park Village A5 subdistrict and is currently vacant. The applicant intends to develop the site with a 10 unit multifamily building 
Citrus Park Village development regulations requ requires a specific block design standards, including block pattern on street parking and street connectivity. The project will be adding a public right of way along its north to serve as access to the multifamily units. For the submitted site plan, you see on the screen, the project is not meeting the block pattern on street parking and street connectivity requirements in order to accommodate the new site design variances from the Citrus Park Village standards are needed. There are three variances being requested, as, as I said. The one is found in 310.06.01, which is the block pattern. The variance is to reduce by one side of the, no the number of public streets framing a block. The second variance is from 310.06.02, street connectivity, to allow a reduction of the minimum required connectivity ratio, ratio by 1.0 established by the Citrus Park Village. This will result in a connectivity ratio of 1.0. And the last variance is to parking requirements found in 310.06.05. And this is to eliminate on-street parking on new streets. And the, the result will be that the proposed new street, which is public, will not have on-street parking. And um, that's all from staff. Thank you. All right, applicant. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Hearing Officer. Chris McNeil, 15957 North Florida Avenue in Lutz, Florida. 33549 on behalf of the applicant. I'm going to switch over to the overhead. Thank you. Um, I'd like to zoom out just a little bit to try to uh, walk through this and then I'll come back to the site plan. This is the overall uh, vicinity map, uh, just looking uh, from a little bit larger area where one block north of Gun Highway off of uh, Burkford. This is a uh, image of the block pattern that's in reference. Mm -hmm. The entire site is this orange area as well as the proposed road area here to the north. Uh, the block pattern, as you can see, is well laid out in this area and the Citrus Park uh, Village plan kind of sets this up for additional improvement, but it, it might, I would say that it's a little outdated given the how much the property is cut uh given that if you keep cutting out uh, the block patterns you eventually run out of property uh, so i would say that this is already in a block pattern itself but um given the uh um uh, the requirements we're proposing to include it in and in further in this block pattern as we're as we're showing uh so it would be on on two roads and that is the request here is that it would not be on a on a third uh, which is very similar to these other properties that are north and south of us. All right, so um, just Mr. McNeil, this um, this graphic here demonstrates the block pattern in uh, the Citrus Park area, and the subject property is basically a whole block or a whole block face, and um, what's being proposed is a unified development on that subject property. Is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. If, if you're referring to this being the, the mm -hmm. site, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the, uh, an entire block would be uh, this size. Basically, yep. this is more of a half a block. Got it. Yes. Okay. I see. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this then kind of dominoes into the connectivity and the on-street parking request as well. Uh, the street connectivity, it talks about having uh, more than one node, um, basically a street connectivity of two. So um for any of these roads here they would not meet that in this situation so we're just proposing basically the same thing that matches as what's out there um, in the event that this property to the west was ever redeveloped that would be the time to where this could connect and extend through as a requirement at that time that would then bring that connectivity ratio for them as well as us up to two uh, so we're proposing this as a a temporary condition in the event that would be improved further to west and that would be similar to again these other uh, roads that come to that limit as well mm -hmm. uh, lastly on the variance of parking the, all the roads that are out there now are uh, lack sidewalks they don't meet current county standards the road that we're proposing would meet the county standard um, and for that reason, the uh, the on street parking, which is this is an example of, of uh, just the road to the north of us, all mark. And so you can see there is some on street 
uh, parking, but nothing uh, formally delineated. Uh, the request for us for not providing that on street parking was related to the site plan here because of the proposed driveways that we were identifying along for the townhouses. Uh, two things about that. One, all of them would have two car garages, and so they're allowed to have two cars in there as well as have enough room behind the sidewalk so that two cars could be in front of that. This is an exhibit that kind of shows what I'm describing there. Uh, it does not preclude us from having on-street parking on the north side, which you can see there'd be a, a potentially to have a lot there if, if it's needed, um, but we don't really see that to be needed. So it's really just along this this side of that road that we would be requesting the variance for. So, uh, Mr. McNeil, you're saying there there is room for on-street parking on the north? Yes, ma'am. North side? Right. Okay. But just not on the south. Okay. Because that would block the driveways at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing to note uh, is we had requested design exception for a temporary turnaround. Um, that's been uh, verbally approved as an approvable um, as an approvable situation for uh, this street. I don't have a, a written documentation of that yet, but I just wanted to note it, that it was being that it has been submitted and, and considered. Um, also, with that, these other streets that I've shown as examples that are further north uh, do not have any turnaround or EMS uh, consideration. So that's an improvement to the existing conditions that are in the neighborhood. So just in conclusion uh, with that, this will bring uh, new townhouses to the CPB area, which is uh, highly desired, great uh, community, but highly desired for the housing demand, uh, provides additional county infrastructure and and sidewalk along a new roadway, which obviously is, a, is an improvement to the area as well, and with the EMS consideration. Uh, one other last thing I'd like to point out that I think is a positive for this is that it provides additional buffering uh, to the properties to the north by being uh, set back some distance away from that property line. In this case, it'd be 60 feet to the very front of the building, which would be here, and then 70 feet further back, that's a requirement on the setbacks from the from the right of way. Uh, because of that, the multi-story buildings would then, they don't have the same view to the backyards as if we were right up on the property line, which like zoning uh, in this situation could be much closer uh, in the event this variance was not approved. The main um, justification hardship that we have is obviously the, I'm sorry. No, that's okay, I was just moving my cup. <laughs> The main uh, request and hardship we have is just this rectangular, regular shaped lot. And then by providing uh, that additional access, that it further intensifies that same orientation. So with that. All right. Close. I have no more questions for you right now. Thank you. Are you submitting those documents to the clerk? Thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, I don't hear anyone. Is there anything further from development services staff? No, ma'am. All right, and Mr. McNeil, you, did you have anything further you wanted to add? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. That will close the hearing then on um, application 22-0475. All right. That concludes our variances. So we're now going to move into section J of the agenda, which are special uses. First case is J1, uh, special use 22-0240. The applicant is Dune FL Land 1 Sub LLC and South Shore Bay Club LLC. The request is for a four COPX alcoholic beverage permit with separation waivers. A staff report and recommendation will be presented by Israel Monsanto following the applicant's presentation. All right, applicant. Good, af good afternoon, Cami Corbett with the law firm of Hill Ward Henderson. Sorry for the delay. I have a PowerPoint. Okay. 
Next slide, please. The subject property is located south of 674 and east of US 301. Next slide. This is the site plan for the proposed wet zoning area. Next slide. And if this looks familiar to you, it should. Uh, you heard this, uh, a similar case in November of 2021. That was for a special use permit for consumption and sales for the private park use only. And sales and consumption were limited to residents and guests. The hours of operation were 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. and on Monday through Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And we had waivers of distance separation approved at, in that application. This application now is to allow for AB sales and consumption on the premises for the outdoor recre recreational uses, including bars and eating establishments that were approved by major modification 210417. Uh, we have revised the hours of operation to conform with the conditions of approval with that major modification. So we have 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and Sunday 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And again, we're asking for the same distance waiver requirements. Next slide. In the last area was a little outdated. This is what it actually looks like. This is the constructed facility in the lagoon. Next slide. Some of the outdoor indoor areas where the food and restaurant, uh, food and beverage will be sold. Next slide. Next slide. And next slide. Uh, this is part of the overall South Shore Master uh, Master. South Shore Bay Master Plan, you can see the graphic on the right. It's two interconnected zoning approvals uh, to the north and to the south. Overall, it's 2,924 approved units. We have a thousand, over a thousand platted lots. Uh, and you can see the lagoon tract, overall lagoon tract is 19.7 acres and the crystal lagoon itself is uh, five acres. And it's also a res residential amenity, but it also provides semi-public access per the major modification. Next slide. And so, yes. Ms. Corbett, um, just so I understand and follow this correctly, and I do recall this, uh, this application before or this use before. So previously, as I recall, it was, it was to be a private use serving only the residents there. And now that has changed. Yes. It will be a public amenity. It's a semi public access, so it's ticketed at access, which we have several conditions in the major modification to address how that will be managed and kept separate and how that will how that will be required to be operated. But yes, the service of alcoholic beverage uh, would and the consumption on premises would both be members of the community and members of the public who are ticketed to be there. Okay, thank you. And then again, we agree with staff's findings of the special and unique circumstances for the waivers. Uh, we promote use by community residents. We have a lot of golf cart spacing there. Uh, there are relatively no small number of existing homes within that 250 feet. And the residents are mostly sh separated by that Lagoon Shore Boulevard, which is actually oper operates and function as a collector roadway. And our hours of operation are limited per the conditions. Is Lagoon Shore... Uh Public roadway? Is it is a CDD owned road. Oh, I see. Okay. So it, it, it is a public roadway in the sense that it's owned by the CDD, yeah. but it is, it is gated access, which is controlled. Um, and uh, we have, again, conditions in the major modification. Actually, if you go to the next slide, there are a number of operational uh, requirements that are in, contained in the major modification that will control the access um, from the public to this facility. And with that, we are happy to answer any questions and respectfully request approval. Okay, thank you. I don't have any further questions for you right now. All right, is there anyone here or, well, no, we're here from development services staff first. All right, thank you, Mr. Monsanto. These are Monsanto development services. As the applicant stated, the request is to add a new uh, wet zoning and we'll rescind the existing wet zoning. The applicant did a good job explaining the reasons why they're requesting the new wood zoning. So I'm going to go through the staff findings. Per LDC section 611.11E3 provides for approval of separation waivers where there are special unique circumstances where the alcoholic beverage use applied for does not have significant impacts on surrounding land uses and certain circumstances negate the necessity for the specified distance requirements. The conditions of approval for major mod 210417 include several requirements to promote use of the lagoon facility by the community residents. A relatively small number of existing homes and lots are within the required 250 foot separation and the closest are separated from the proposed Lagoon Park by Lagoon Shore Boulevard. The proposed hours of operation for the wet zoning 
which are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily, are generally more restrictive than those permitted by the Land Development Code, which are Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 3 a.m. the following day, and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 3 a.m. the following day. However, staff finds that by ordinance, the sale and, the sale and or consumption of alcohol cannot begin before 11 a.m. on Sundays. Notwithstanding the hours of operation proposed by this special use permit today, the applicant proposes a condition to allow the hours of operation for the sale and consumption of, of alcoholic beverages to allow for extended evening night hours, but not later than 11 p.m. If the hours of operation of the Crystal Lagoon uses or portion thereof are modified in the future, subject to a modification of the plan development and approved by the Board of County Commissioners. For these reasons, staff finds the proposed wet zoning does not pose significant impacts to surrounding land use and the, necess the necessity for the specified distance operations requirements is negated by the circumstances identified. Additionally, development services staff does not object to the proposed conditions to allow for the extension of the hours for the sale of consumption of alcoholic beverages, subject again to future modification of the plan development. Therefore, staff finds the proposed four COP X wet zoning approvable subject to the conditions um, as proposed in the staff report. And this approval is based upon the wet zone survey indicating a total of 500, 555,219 square feet of space for the proposed use that was received on November 29th, 2021. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Monsanto. All right, now we'll go to um, anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application. Don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or, uh, or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, do not hear anyone. All right. So, uh, county staff, anything further? No, right. ma'am. Applicant, anything further? Cami Corbett, nothing further unless you have questions. No questions for you, thank you. All right, so this will close the hearing then on application 22-0240. Our next case is item J2, special use application 22-0356. The applicant is Aaron Schmalzi. They're, uh, they're requesting a two COP alcoholic beverage permit with separation waiver. Staff findings will be presented by Sam Ball following the applicant's presentation. All right, applicant first, please. Good afternoon. That would be good. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Amy Peters with AD Engineering, 6720 East Fowler Avenue, Suite 170 in Temple Terrace, Florida, 33617. Um, I am here representing the applicant, Mr. Aaron Schmashley. Um, we actually applied for this special use after getting approved through the PD. A modification to actually add home brewing business, neighborhood businesses, and uh, microbreweries without uh, outside storage. And that was approved on March 8th, um, 2022. Um, we read the staff report that Sam Ball has sent to us, and uh, we agree with everything in it. There was only one minor um, thing that I wanted to bring up on their section 6.11.11i. The hours of operation um, in the staff report, it says Monday through Fridays from 7 a.m. to 3 a.m. on the following day, and it should be corrected to Monday through Saturday from, 11, uh, from um, 7 a.m. to 3 a.m. the following day. Okay, slow, uh, slow down just a second. Let me make sure that I've got that correct. Sure. Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 3 a.m. the following day. And then, of course, Sundays from 11 to 3 a.m. the following day. Would that be correct, Mr. Hisney? Yeah, I'm not sure where she's citing the report. Uh, in the second paragraph of our report, uh, it is stated that uh, by the LDC hours. Well, it says Monday through Friday, so he skipped Saturday altogether. Oh, I see what you say. That is yes. correct. Sorry about that. Yep, be Monday through Saturday. We'll right. the report. Yep, thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. Go ahead. So we just wanted to say that uh, Mr. Uh, Aaron Strasley, he has actually has created a home brewing um, equipment that he actually wants to introduce to the neighborhood as well as the public. And what it is, is he wants to actually have classes and he wants to uh, sell, whenever he has a class, he usually uh, does 
like a presentation, and there's so much that it actually develop, uh, produces that he would like to sell it, and that's the reason for this. So the, cl the class that uh, that Mr. Schmaltzy teaches mm -hmm. will produce um, product, alcoholic beverage product. Yes, beer I mean, and wine. And so he needs to be able to sell that instead of yes. just wasting it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. He's also going to brew um, coffee and and um, and tea and soda as well with the same okay. and uh, so we the only thing that's um, that we had to be in here today for a waiver was the residence um, separation distance is actually supposed to be 250 per the land code and it's 177 that 177 only goes to the backyards of two residences one of them being his family <laughs> Okay. Um, again, the residents are not facing him. They're actually facing uh, Calle Rosa, which is part of their subdivision. And between the residents and his um, establishment, there is actually a, uh, a six-foot masonry wall mm -hmm. that's uh, with vegetation on it that would actually not let the, the residents look okay. at, the, at the, um, the establishment. Okay. Anything and further? No. Do you have any questions? Uh, I, I don't think I do. Okay. For you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Be sure and sign in with the clerk's office. All right. Development services. Uh, did the PowerPoint show up on the... I place an image up on the screen? Not yet. Okay. Now, yes. Oh, great. Um, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Sam Ball of Development Services. Um, the applicant is um, seeking approval of a distance separation waiver for a TCP alcoholic beverage permit for the sale and consumption of beer and wine on, on and off the prim permitted presidents in connection with the proposed home brewing um, business and a uh, microbrewery to be located at 1050 Cypress Village Boulevard. Uh, the wet zone area will be comprised of a footprint of 1,533 square feet, um, as um, shown on the wet zone survey stamped and received on January 19th. Um, the, um, according to LDC section 611.11 D5, the distance from the proposed structure to residentially zoned property um, shall be 250 feet. According to the survey submitted by the applicant, the, re the request does not comply with this requirement. The proposed wet zoning is 177 feet from residentially zoned property to the east that is developed with single family homes. Um, the applicant is given a thorough presentation describing the, the request. Um, just going to focus on staff findings. Um, the the um, section 611.11 E3 per provides for approval of separation waivers where there are special or unique circumstances where the alcoholic beverage use applied for does not have significant impacts on the surrounding land uses and certain circumstances negate the necessity for the uh, specified distance requirements. Um, as you can see on the overhead, the, the backyards, or um, you can see where the houses are uh, circled. There's a, a four-lane Cypress Boulevard, a median in the middle, and then the, the actual business is, is outlined in green. Um, and then uh, this, is, this image came from the staff, uh, from the applicant's um, application. Um, staff concurs with the applicant's justification regarding the distance waiver request from the community, um, from the residential use. Uh, the single family lots that are located within 250 feet of subject property are located um, by Cypress by a four lane road, and additionally, the home space away um, from the proposed wet zoning. Hang on, I'm sorry, my screen is messing up. Um, from the wet zoning and the rear yard are screened by a vegetated masonry wall. Um, the conditions of approval for PD73-0186 is modified by PRS22043, limit the use of the site to a home brewing business and microbrewery. 
um, the normal route of travel from the entrance of the proposed wet zone premises to the single family lots within 250 feet is more than 1,500 feet. Um, staff received no objections from property owners in the area or any reviewing agencies. Um, and for reasons uh, discussed, staff finds the proposed wet zoning does not pose significant impacts on surrounding land uses, thereby negating the necessity for the prescribed separation requirement. Um, therefore, staff um, therefore staff finds the proposed to COP alcoholic beverage permit to be approvable, subject to the recommended condition that the permitted alcoholic beverage use shall be limited to a home brewing business um, equipment supplies uh, instruction and a microbrewery. Uh, pursuant to condition 19 of PD 7301 uh, uh, 86 as modified by PRS 22043. Uh, approval is based upon the revised wet zone survey reflecting a total wet zone footprint of 1,533 square feet uh, shown on the revised wet zone survey uh, received January 19, uh, 2022. Uh, that concludes my presentation. All right, thank you, Mr. Ball. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? All right, don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, do not hear anyone. All right, development services staff, anything further? No, ma'am. Okay, applicant, did you have anything further to add? No, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you. That will close the hearing on application 22-0356. Okay, our last case today is item J3, special use application 22-0421. The applicant is Tiberico Ramirez. They are requesting a four COP alcoholic beverage permit with separation waivers. Staff report and recommendation will be presented by Tanya Chapella following the applicant's presentation. Applicant, thank you. How are you? Um, my name is Nicola Romero. I'm in representation of Mr. Ramirez, the um, restaurant owner. Um, we are applying for the license to COP. Um, the restaurant is already in business. And the idea to get this license is to complement complement the, the, the food and, and the menu they have actually currently. And we file all the requirements through this to the zoning and we are expecting just to get the approval to go ahead. All right, so it's an existing restaurant. Yes, ma'am. And you're just seeking to add um, beer and wine, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And it is Sale and consumption of beer and wine on and off the permitted premises. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, anything further that you wish to add? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, please sign in with uh, the clerk, clerk, and uh, we'll hear from development services staff. Mm -hmm. Good it. afternoon. This is Tanya Chapella, uh, development services person to the land development code section 61111. The request is for a distance separation waiver for a 2COP alcoholic beverage permit for an existing restaurant, Buchos, located at 1110 North US Highway 41, to allow the sale and consumption of beer and wine on and off the permitted premises. For the following separation requirements apply to the proposed wet zoning. The distance from the proposed wet zoning to certain community uses shall be 500 feet. According to the survey submitted by the applicant, the request does not comply with this requirement. The following community uses were identified within the required distance. Um, number one is the Northside Baptist Church. The applicant requests a 121-foot separation waiver. Number two, St. St. Ain uh, Catholic Church is located 153.2 feet southeast of proposed wet zoning. Uh, the applicant requests a 346.8 foot separation waiver. Number three is Jay's Angels Learning Child Care Center. Um, the applicant requests a 354.7 uh, foot waiver separation. 
Um, number four is the survey identifies property at 1308 North U.S. Highway 41 as owned by the Catholic Diocese of St. Petersburg property. Um, so the applicant, um, I mean, this property is located 338.9 feet north of proposed wet zoning, and the applicant requests a 161.1 foot waiver separation. Um, the distance from the proposed wet zoning to residential zone property shall be 250 feet. According to the survey submitted by the applicant, the request does comply with this requirement. Um, there shall be no more than three approved alcoholic beverage uses of certain type within 1,000 feet of the proposed alcoholic beverage use as measured from the proposed structure to the existing alcoholic beverage use. So according to the survey submitted by the applicant, the request does comply with this requirement. Um, staff finds the proposed wet zoning consistent with the commercial institutional character of Highway uh, 41. Staff Porter finds the, uh, that due to the circumstances of the proposed wet zoning does not pose significant impacts on surrounding land uses, thereby negating the necessity of, for the required separations. Um, for, the, uh, for those reasons, uh, staff finds the request is approvable. This recommendation is based upon the revised wet zone survey showing a wet zone area 1,618 square feet total area, including 1,054 uh, square feet of indoor area and 564 square feet of outdoor area, um, received March 9, 2022. Um, this concludes my presentation. I'm available for questions. Okay, Mr. Pella, just wanted to clarify or just to confirm that uh, the property owned by the diocese does not require distance waiver. Is that correct? It is correct. Okay, all right. So distance waiver required from the Baptist Church, St. Anne's Church, and the Angels Learning Center. That's all. Yes. All right, all right thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? I do not hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, do not hear anyone. Uh, anything further from Development Services staff? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. And applicant, did you have anything further you wish to add? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, that concludes the hearing on application 22-0421. And that concludes our land use hearing officer meeting today.